there, everybody. Hey, what's up? This is Sebastian Swick and Eric Castellanos, and we are Amazon Lit. So many of you are already following us on Instagram and on our other platforms, primarily Instagram. You know, now we're growing our YouTube uh, channel as well, and trying to bring you as much value as possible. Absolutely. And we thought, what a better time than now when we're at IRCE, which is a huge retail slash e-commerce show, one of the largest in the country, right here happening in Chicago. So we've got a lot of information that we've learned in the past two days. And uh, you know, we're gonna share some of that with you and just share some of the trends and changes that are happening in our company right now. So So and, and really IRCE it's it's very similar to a lot of the trade shows we go to where, where people are offering their services, but that's not really why we came out here. Personally, we came out because there's informative sessions on topics like how artificial intelligence can help streamline efficiencies, growing your profit margin, where to spend the marketing dollars, how to decrease your A costs, um, how to turn take a product from online to offline, how to grow brick and mortars, the, the, the amount of different sessions and knowledge and experience from people who are veterans in this industry, it's pretty impressive. I mean, yesterday we uh, we were in that workshop with Luis from uh, Native, yes. and we got to hear the story of a, a young guy who uh, started a company about five years ago, and he sold it last started it online, and he sold it to Procter Gamble last year for a hundred million dollars. Yeah. Uh, so obviously, these are people that we look up to and we want to learn from because uh, they know they have that formula for success. And we have our formula for success as far as Amazon wholesaling and, and building private labels. But to scale to the next level and to continue to grow, we come to shows like this uh, just to get more value, right? I mean, I, I feel like the past 48 hours and, and even meeting with the other Amazon sellers there yesterday, it, like, I, it just, it's so insightful. Absolutely, I 100% agree. And then it's, it's building relationships too. You know, so we got to we got to meet with some of the speakers and uh, also follow their social media accounts and reach out to them through there. Like, hey, it was great, great session this morning. And, and it's all about networking and, and, and also all the companies that are actually at the trade show. You know, there's warehouse management systems and advertise management software and, and really the list goes on. And, it's, and are we going to use any of them? Probably not. Maybe. Maybe we'll use some of them. But it's more about the relationship. We build relationships, and then then we see these other services that are being provided, and some you know some of the ideas that these other companies are doing, we're going to incorporate into our own software, yeah. and, and you know optimize our software that we use to continue to grow our Amazon business. Yeah, you know that's definitely a huge part of uh, the reason we're here, and it's, it's it's just a different show. Typically, when you see us at trade shows, it's more vendor supplier oriented, and it's about us sourcing more products finding more profitable items. This one's more so about the services and about our industry. Absolutely, absolutely. And some of the other things we're taking advantage of while we're out here is, is meeting with some companies that we do do business yes. with. We got dinner with a company we've been doing do business with for how long? About a year now, yeah, about a year now. So we get, we get the opportunity to have dinner with them tonight, chat about different things that are coming up, different opportunities. And, and then don't forget another huge opportunity we've had was just meeting with some of our some of our clients, you know? We, yes, we had, you guys. Yeah, we had a consult, two consultations. I had a consultation last night, Eric had another consultation last night. So meeting with some clients and doing some face-to-face -face mentoring and consulting, which we wouldn't be able to because of their proximity to us, typically. So. Uh, and Eric mentioned on, on Instagram, which is really cool, we'll be in Vegas uh, at the end of July. So we're also going to be doing a couple sessions out there and we're exhibiting. We have a booth at ASD. If you've never been, highly, highly recommend you to come join us. Uh, hundreds of suppliers and vendors, hundreds of opportunities for better sourcing. Yeah. And if you're interested in attending ASD, uh, contact us through social media and I can send you over a free link to get your ticket so you can attend as a um, as an attendee for no cost to you that's right yep yeah we have that promotion going on right now if you haven't signed up for ASD contact us and like Eric said you can go essentially for free well you can enter for free you just got to take care of travel yeah. so what do you 
what do you like to do when you go to like what is your format for it, I know ours is pretty much the same but like what is your go-to like how do you how do you organize a trip like this like are we are we just showing up do we need business cards like kind of what's the what's the mentality going into this well early on we used to just wing it and yeah. then we and then we learned to it's like everything else in life you want to set up like a template so I don't want to I don't want to have I, I have a schedule, but I don't force myself to stick to it. It's just like a guideline. It's, it's to have a base. So if things, if, if there's an opportunity for me elsewhere, I will go follow that. But when there isn't, I'm sticking to the format, I'm sticking to the template. And you know, it's typically, we'll, we'll hit these workshops up, then we have exhibitors that we wanna go see, we meet with them. And then afterwards, the format is, you know, we've decided we're gonna start, let's say at, they, you know, all the booths are numbered, and we'll start at 100, and we'll work our way all the way to the end, where at this uh, event, it's the 6,000s. And that's how we're working. We'll go through every row and see what opportunities there are, shake some hands, and a lot of the times, uh, you know, we'll meet people we weren't expecting to, and we take it from there. But then we go back to our base, which is our template that we have, and, uh, you know, always being prepared. Bring the business cards, you know, I like to always I, I like to always bring an extra charger because the phone's gonna die out and you know we have work calling and, and things happening at work, decisions needing to be made and them contacting us. And uh, really just be very, very open minded to flexibility and schedule and, and having a good time and just learning, I guess. It's yeah. really about learning. Yeah. And Sebastian brings up a valid point. You don't wanna do what we did early on was just wing it. Or you could just wing it, but from our experience, we're telling you it's probably not your best bet to just wing it. So you know the the list of the vendors that will be there is provided on whatever uh, trade shows website it is. So you can review that list. You can start figuring out, mapping out your day of which which companies you definitely want to see. You can even schedule appointments with these companies, so you're not walking up blind and just saying, "Hey, you got you know 20 minutes to sit with me," and they're like, "Absolutely not. We we got the rest of the day booked. You can come back tomorrow." So it's, it's really about mapping that out. And then one of the beautiful things about being able to go to these trade shows is really the processes that we have in place on our day-to-day -day operations at our, at our Amazon business where we can actually travel and do things like this and the business isn't gonna fall apart because there's, there's set processes that, that keep everything in line. And there's managerial staff and employees that, that run the show while we're out of the office room. Well, we get to grow the business. We, yeah. we get to spend time looking into the future while they're handling the day-to-day -day operations. We're concerned about the tomorrow operation, which is cool. And like another thing about winging it and, and, and finding that template is the opportunity, like Eric said, to look at the website. And not only do you get to see the vendors that are going to be there, the suppliers that are going to be there, but there's a lot of vendors and suppliers that have their own website, or you can even contact them before the show. ASD, I'd highly recommend to start going through that list and start contacting the vendors that you want to meet with and ask for a catalog beforehand. There's nothing more that a vendor will like than to you placing an order at the show. And this is a huge opportunity for you to get discounted pricing because it's face to face, you're meeting with them, they, they, love, they love the rush of getting that sale and you're gonna love the rush of getting that discount. So this is huge, like this is a huge opportunity if you prepare correctly. I mean, some of the shows that we go to, we go in there, this is when we go in there and we're making those $40,000, $50,000 deals in one shot with a brand that, with either with a brand directly or with a brand that a distributor handles. You know, uh, you know, at the last show I was just at in Chicago, uh, you know, we placed a 350 case order. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get all of it, but we did, we just, you know, my buyer just got back to me, we were able to get 120 cases of that. So, it was it was a nice size order, and it wouldn't have happened if we didn't meet with them face to face, and we've purchased from this company for four or five years, that's the largest discount we've ever had on that brand. Mm. Yeah, and so, so don't be discouraged, you know, because it might not be this show that that brand or distributor or wholesaler or company is willing to do business with you. But it's more about the relationship and harvesting that relationship because the next show might be another opportunity. And a lot of these, a lot of these companies at these shows, they travel the country with the shows. Mm -hmm. So they'll be in, you know, ASD, um, in Vegas, they'll be in Chicago at one of the sweet shows. They'll be in New York City at the Jacob Javits Center. They'll be all over, um, all over the country traveling. So you're going to see them again.
Yeah, so at the fancy food show that I was at just on Sunday in New York, um, you know, I was going up to people. It was great. I was, some, some of the vendors I was going up to, I wasn't even going to make a deal with. They just saw me, you know, we shook hands, asked how business is. Some companies, you know, that we've seen grow from their beginning stages of importing products from Holland to now it's one of the largest, uh, the largest products in the U.S. Yeah. So, and it's really cool to watch them grow and they know we grow. And, and it's building relationships and that's how you get the deals. That's how you grow a sustainable business. Listen, there's lots of ways to make quick money today. Lying, scheming, saying you're a brick and mortar if you're not. Uh, having multiple ghost accounts on Amazon and, 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 and selling on multiple accounts. There's lots of ways you can make quick money today, but is it really sustainable? Is it going to be fruitful for your future? Is it going to be something that you can make a, a living off of and then have it incorporated into your lifestyle? For us, that, that answer is no way. Yeah. And that's why we do the way we do it. We're very transparent, very open, and it's great to like meet with other large sellers, you know, top 20 sellers on Amazon, and, and talk to them and know that they're modeling their business exactly the same way. You know, it, it, it kind of stamps that we're, we, we have the right mindset. Yeah. Yeah, it's super important, honesty, integrity. That's, that's, that's what our business is built off of. And we're firm, firm believers, and we incorporate those principles into all aspects of our lives. And that's and, and I can speak for both of us, and that's really why our lives are so truly amazing and beautiful today. And that's why our business is flourishing, and our families are, are close-knit and, and flourishing, and, and our social lives are good. And, and like it's because of the, the principles we live by, the standard principles that we live by, and it allows us to live this beautiful life that we live. Yeah, yeah. And it definitely didn't happen overnight. No, uh, and, and don't be discouraged. You know, we were talking to somebody earlier who isn't a avid computer user and who's worried about, um, you know, how is how is she going to grow an online business? And I'll tell you, you know, I've said it before. I was a bartender and a waiter. I, I mean. I, I had the basic computer skills, but I was far, far from where I am today. Uh, and it just took the 10,000 hours of mastery, it took a lot of passion, it took a lot of dedication, it took a lot of convincing, because there was a lot of times where you know I, I, I want to quit and I'd want to say, you know what, maybe this isn't for me, and I'd look at these other larger sellers and I'd be like, I'm not going to be them, I can't get there. But, but then you brush that off, you know, the negativity, you let it go and you move forward and put one foot in front of the other and that's kind of where, where we are today. We just keep stepping forward, keep making the decisions. And uh, one thing we were talking about yesterday is like a lot of the decisions that, that we incorporate into our business, we don't have the end goal yet how exactly we're going to get there. We know what we want to accomplish maybe. But by putting putting these actions into our business, saying, hey, we want to become more efficient, and then we throw something at the wall and see if it works, and we do a lot of A-B testing. And Eric mentions all the time, there are failures, but really what they are, just learning experiences, and we grow from that, and it allows us to, now allows us to be where we are today, where we can lead the business, and it still grows, and we can travel and, uh, and, and, and obtain more business. Yeah. So I think we want to leave you with maybe the five, I'm not going to limit it, but let's say five or six like most important um, kind of rules or things to follow when you're, when you're hitting a trade show. Mm -hmm. um, so first I'll start it off and we'll go back and forth. So I would say first is just trade shows, trade shows, trade shows. Like get to as many trade shows as humanly possible, put them on your business credit card so you can get points and just put yourself out there and get to trade shows. Uh exactly what Eric said, kind of just feeding off of that, would be the relationships. Relationships at trade shows. You know, the consultation I had yesterday, I told these guys, I said, listen, could you possibly have a girlfriend with a relationship and build a relationship over the phone or through email with a girl? It's not going to happen. Or vice versa with a boy, it's not going to happen. Well, trade shows and building a business is the same thing. You need to meet face to face. You need to shake hands. You need to have dinner with them like we're having tonight. You need to build authentic relationships in order to have an authentic uh, business collaboration. And then number three would be plan accordingly. Right, so review the list of vendors that are going to be there. Set up a schedule. A lot of these trade shows have apps where you can just click add to agenda and it adds that 
that time slot to your agenda and you can look at your agenda and also be, be, um, be free with that agenda, you know? It's not so super strict where you have to get here. By the end of the day, you ran around so much you didn't, weren't able to absorb any information. So it's, it's very a lenient agenda. It's not super strict, but have an agenda and have booths you want to stop at and have appointments set up. Yeah, it's a base foundation. And, and to feed off of what Eric said again, I would say contact these vendors and suppliers that you want to meet with beforehand and ask for catalogs. Tell them you're ecstatic about placing your first order with them. And they'll send you catalogs and be ready to negotiate, be ready to put some deals. We like to have ranges on our price. We like to have what, what our optimal price is and what the most we're willing to pay. And then we go in there, we throw at them the optimal price. And as long as it's in our range, then we place these orders. And you'll see, you'll get these large discounts when it's at, at, on spot, when you're authentic with them and face-to-face. And -face. Yeah. And then also, get uncomfortable. Mm. You know, I know for both of us, sometimes it's super uncomfortable to go meet that new person, shake their hand, introduce yourself. But we just work through that fear and we, and we break the ice. And, and once the conversation gets flowing, it's both something we're passionate about. So sometimes once the conversation goes, we can't shut up. It's just like we keep going. <laughs> we keep going. You know, so get uncomfortable, break that comfort zone, put yourself out there, go meet new people. You're not going to grow a large business by sitting in your house. You can grow a business sitting in your house, but you're not gonna grow a large business sitting in your house. Exactly. And what about the last one, Sebastian? What would you say the last one would be? Well, I mean, you have to come with business cards. You have to, you know, you have to come with business cards and you have to be ready to, you know, enjoy yourself too. Like, like set some experiences up, you know? Like, reward yourself. You're, you're building a business, you know? Obviously, for us, it's always about reinvesting in yourself, but part of reinvesting in yourself is also rewarding yourself. You're working hard, at least, you know, we're working hard, and we, at the same time, we want to make sure to reward ourselves. We go out for a nice dinner, you know, we, we stay in a nicer location, and we remember that, like, these are some of the opportunities that have been given to us because we've worked our butts off, and now we've been blessed. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's a lot of information about trade shows. Yeah. And uh, hopefully we'll see you guys at the next trade show. And if you ever see us, you ever run into us, make sure you stop us, say hello. We love networking and yes. growing relationships with people all over the world. It's, uh, it's, it's really the bright spot of our lives. It's helping, helping you guys because you guys in turn help us and we all collectively help each other. We become this big, wonderful Amazon community and it's, it's such a beautiful thing. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah. So thanks for joining in. Thank you guys, we appreciate you, much love. Make sure that you uh, subscribe to us, hit that subscribe button. Any comments, any questions, throw them at us. You know, we're very quick to respond. We're always answering questions that are thrown on us on all platforms. Uh, you know, we pride ourselves in that. We pride ourselves in doing the live sessions and being thrown questions and responding in real time. Mm -hmm. We're providing you authentic information. We're showing you our warehouse. You know, we're showing you the sales numbers in real time, uh, you know, because we want you to know that this is a true business and there is true opportunities out there for you. 100%. I couldn't, I have nothing to add to that. You Stay lit. Stay lit, <laughs> Stay lit everybody. <laughs>